Recording starting. Uh, welcome everyone to the Jenkins Docs Office Hours. This is the European US Hours on November 17th. Uh, today we have Mark Waite, uh, myself, Bruno Varakpin, uh, and Alex Brandes is here as well. Welcome to everyone and thanks for joining. Uh, on today's agenda, we have an action item about switching the docs mailing list, uh, some uh, information to share about the Jenkins elections, uh, some talk about and a conversation around the documentation officer duties and what that means. Uh, just a couple updates on the next LTS and weekly, and then um, a couple items about next Thursday, Thanksgiving is in the US. So uh, status of docs office hours and another blog post that'll be coming out. Uh, is there anything else that anyone would want to add to the agenda today, or uh, does that cover things for today? Alex, were there any specific topics you wanted to bring? No, nothing new to the agenda. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, so the first thing um, is that the, the docs mailing list needs to be archived and switched over to the community.jenkins.io site. Um, that is something that I'll be working on with Mark as we transition into the uh, next term of Jenkins uh, election winners. I, I don't know how to say it, but uh, yeah, uh, on that note though, uh, so the Jenkins elections uh, have been officially announced today. Um, what this means is that we do have all new board members and officers and because each role only received one nomination, uh, everyone's a winner. So. Uh, congratulations to Alex and Ur Ulrich, who are now new board members for the Jenkins Governance Board. Uh, and for officers, Tim Jacone will be uh, staying in the release officer role, as will Alyssa in the events officer role. Uh, Wadek will be staying on as security officer. I will be joining as documentation officer. Uh, and Damien's going to stay in infrastructure officer for the next term as well. Uh, so. Uh, first and foremost, big, 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 big thanks to everyone who participated, uh, made their voice heard and shared nominations. Uh, we couldn't be done without you. And uh, even um, as much appreciation to the candidates for confirming, accepting, uh, and graciously stepping into the roles. Uh, officially, everything starts on December 3rd, um, but due to the nature of the way that the elections worked out this year, we have our answer already. So once December 3rd steps in, we'll look at the transition and sharing between uh, current and former uh, officers and members. Uh, that does, of course, mean voter registration and candidate nomination are closed. Uh, and we still have a community discourse thread for the election. But uh, since we're not technically having actual elections this year, uh, yeah, we've um, it may not be as useful as the blog post or any other community point uh, for getting that information. Um, but community thread is there, it's always available. So we can always uh, discuss more on there or talk about things in the discourse thread. Yeah, Kevin, let me maybe yeah. add something to that. Maybe yeah. you should add that to the blog post that we don't have elections like last year or the year before, in case mm -hmm. someone asks like, where do, I need to, where do I need to go to vote? Because last year yep. and the year before, we used a third party service for that people may be familiar with. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do that this year, people may be confused if they need to vote, where do they cast their vote, and so on. Right, right. The, and um, typically, we'd be using the Condorcet voting system from Cornell. Um, I, I did check with Mark about this one, and he did share that uh, in, the, in the past, uh, when a particular role receives one nomination, uh, an election is not required this year, we had that exact situation happen for all the board members and officers. So um, that is uh, spelled out there. But uh, if there's some more detail that can be added or some additional clarity that can be provided, I'm more than happy to uh, help do that in any way. So, yeah. So Alex, uh, do you think that's enough or this description is enough or do you would you prefer we do something more? Right? we could for example highlight in the linkedin post hey elections are complete and um, the new officers have been elected yeah for example i mean to be fair i just read the post right now i didn't give uh, kevin's pr a read before but yeah we could add something to linkedin 
because this paragraph is pretty clear to me, but if someone else didn't read that yet, we can mm -hmm. link them there. Yeah, and we can definitely, um, like we still have to, I still have to propose the tweet and LinkedIn post uh, to be submitted. So we can definitely say specifically, uh, you know, Jenkins uh, elections results or something like that to signify that there is not a voting period this year. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely agree on that. We can definitely make that more clear. So yeah, thank you very much, Alex. Is there anything else uh, that you wanted to share or add on for the election stuff, or is that uh, cover things? That's it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, and um, I may message you just to check, double check on the wording that I suggest for those posts. So uh, I'll follow up with you directly if uh, I have any questions. Okay, wonderful. Uh, then the next thing on, on the agenda is uh, just going over the doc documentation officer duties. So um, Mark and I were talking earlier and we wanted to just go over this, uh, review what the documentation officer's purpose is and uh, a little bit about what they do or I guess what I'll be doing uh, over the next year in my efforts to help uh, maintain and keep up Jenkins as best I can. So, um, Mark, as far as this goes, do you want to start? Do you want to just kind of have an open conversation about it? Sure. Yeah. Well, if if everybody else is okay, if Alex and Bruno don't mind listening as we talk as I talk through the the topic, let's let's do it. Okay. Great. So so Bruno and and Alex, the idea here was, um, let's go through and get a recorded session that talks about what are the duties of the documentation officer. And I captured these items as places to discuss. That way, Kevin's got it, and we've got an archive. And then Kevin will put it into the Jenkins uh, Jenkins site so that it's documented officially there. But this was an easy way for me to share the kinds of things that I did, and and then he can put those into the documentation. And it's for reference for the next documentation officer in the future. So as soon as we can spot Kevin doing something which is not in this part of the video, we can <laughs> say, Kevin! Document that too. Yes, exactly. Good to talk. Right. Yeah, okay. I got it. Yeah. Very good. That's correct. Yeah. So so there are at least, there, there are several several areas, right? Jenkins documentation site is one. Mm -hmm. Jenkins releases is another. Uh, there are also, um, those are the two big ones for, and then there's, there are certainly sub subtopics under those, but those are the two big ones that were on my mind. Uh, if others have other areas of documentation, certainly interested, but those were the key ones for me. Oh, oh I take it back. Let's put one more, Kevin. I, I yeah. really should. Okay, this is uh, wiki, wiki mm -hmm. to GitHub migration progress. But this is not fair. It should have been written before the election process. <laughs> Absolutely, because poor poor Kevin is just being dumped on now, isn't he? Hmm, how did that happen? Yes, right. Okay, so Wiki to GitHub Migration Project, track the progress, um, uh, encourage contributions. And then I guess there are others, which I would call advocacy projects like Google Summer of Code, October uh, Google Summer of Code, Google Season of Docs, if yep. we ever were to choose to do that again, mm -hmm. um, uh, She Code Africa Contributhon. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are also part of the responsibilities. Good. And uh, I actually, um, I think it was Hervé that messaged me in the last week or so too, um, asking like if that's, if they can just ping me and let me know when documentation is needed so that I can assist there. And um, I just wanna put that out there as something that's that falls in line with all of this as well. If uh, there's anything that doesn't have documentation and feels like it needs it, I can constantly be reached and I can always help with that. So uh, sure. if you do come across anything, uh, let me know, submit feedback. I am uh, checking the feedback sheet that we have. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, anything that we might be missing or need, yeah, if it's not something that can be readily improved by fixes, we can add that, so. 
Yeah, good. Excellent. Okay. Um, so then, shall we, yeah. you, are you okay, Kevin, if we just go through this piece, piece by piece, because I think it's worth us doing a record, mm -hmm. including in the recording. So let's start all the way up at the top, the Jenkins documentation site, review, yeah. refine, update, and merge pull requests. So click that pull request link. Mm -hmm. That takes us to, you're already doing this and you're already comfortable with this. Mm -hmm. What this means is you are a member of the, the correct group that allows you permission to merge. So for instance, pick the automated change log for 379, that yep. one. And if we look at the bottom of this one, it says merge, oh, <clears throat> merging is blocked because we haven't had any approval yet. So let's, for the for the fun of it, we're, you're going to approve this one. So go up to the top. Oh, okay. Eventually you're going to have to approve it. So now add your review. This is true. They approved uh, and you could put a comment, temporary, whatever. Right. And we won't merge it. We're just going to see okay. that the button. Notice you've got the green squash and merge button. Mm -hmm. Other users don't get that. So that, right. that proves you have the permissions you need to do this test. So now go back to the Google Doc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Review and act on issue reports. This is, we track issues with the documentation on this GitHub issue tracker. And you'll see here a list of 127 open issues. Now these are relatively mature, meaning they've been there a long time and there's lots to do to improve on many of them. Mm -hmm. But you get to think about, hey, which, which one should we focus on? Why should we focus on that one? So scroll down a little bit and I'm gonna show you one that is of interest to me. Mm -hmm. Whoops, right there up a little installing linux page has no upgrade instructions this is one that i think would be very very nice we had a contributor who said i want to do it but then they didn't do anything on it ah. and so i think it would be really nice for us to have instructions on how to do an upgrade mm -hmm. so back to the doc now so yep. issue tracking and pull request tracking there's another bookkeeping effort. Click the docs issue reports on Jira thing. Okay. First challenge is you've got to log into this site. So yep. top right hand oh. corner, do a login. And this is your uh, accounts.jenkins.io. Oh yeah, so maybe that works. Very good. Mm -hmm. So these are issues that were reported to the to the Jira site before we switched. But oh, what okay. you need to do is periodically look and in the top left corner, if instead of order by priority, you were to click that and say order by uh, create created. Okay. Because what that will tell us is which ones are are may have arrived recently in the wrong location. Got it. Okay. Right, because the other issues page is where the actual documentation tickets right. would be they, coming. They belong. Issues should not arrive here. They shouldn't, right. right? This is not the place for documentation bug reports. But if they do, we wouldn't want to lose them. Right. Okay. okay. And so um, would I then take one of these and create a like a GitHub issue for it? If a new one arrives here, you yep. could you can the first choice is ask the submitter, hey, please could you send submit this as a GitHub issue instead? Mm -hmm. If they don't do it, then you could do it yourself. Okay, right. I can. It's actually uh, easier for most submitters to submit a GitHub issue than it is to submit a Jira issue because their GitHub issue, they're already using their GitHub account. In order to submit to Jira, they have to have a Jenkins account. Got it. So one's a little bit easier without having to have this Jenkins account. Correct. Right. Okay. So let's go back to the to the. Mm -hmm. So next. Now we're getting into the place where we may see things in the recording that are uncomfortable. I apologize if someone's offended. Click that page. Let's open it. And the reason I say it may be offensive is sometimes people say things or write things in this that are really rude and, and rude to the point of, you know, um, foul language, profanity, et cetera. So mm -hmm. if, you'll, if you'll click in the top left-hand corner and then you use control and the down arrow, it'll jump all the way to the bottom of the sheet. Oh, okay. 
No, no, you got to click the timestamp field. Sorry, oh. the, the timestamp cell. So Wait, oh, this one? Click inside the cell A1 and now do a control and the down arrow. Hmm. Oh, maybe it doesn't I'll work that command way. Command if you're on the Mac, maybe. <laughs> ah, okay. ah makes, right. You've that got makes that, more sense. You've got that yep. funny operating system. Sorry. <laughs> Operating Big system, really? <laughs> right. So, so what this is, is we've got, we've got on every documentation page on, or almost every page on Jenkins.io, we've got two links. One, report an issue. If they click report an issue, yeah, go there. Very good. Mm -hmm. So jump to the bottom of this page. You'll see here, improve this page or report a problem. If you click um, improve this page, it will take you right to GitHub. Good. If you click report a problem, um, takes you right to this. There are some of the pages, however, that have a, a survey on them. I, I remember, right, for instance, the was this page helpful? Yes, there it is, that one. If you click that one, if someone fills in this field, it gets published, the results of that gets published to this spreadsheet. Um, and so sometimes you'll get a useful bug report. Um, sometimes you get insulted. That's cool. Right. Sometimes <laughs> you get people saying things that are really, really foul, right? And and you just have to ignore those. Don't don't be offended by them. Just ignore them. Yep. It's This is completely anonymous feedback. And if you look for various forms of profanity, you'll find them in this file. That's not mm -hmm. the objective, right? The, the objective is see if there's something useful that someone's provided. And usually then you'll transform that into an issue on issues.jenkins.io. Automatically right. or by hand? No, no, by hand. And I only okay. do it when I find there's something that I think is so valuable. Yes, I would like it there. So how many yeah. of us are monitoring these five? Uh, two, me and Kevin now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is a doc software so responsibility, so no one else needs to review right. it as far right. as I'm aware. And, and we, don't, we don't expect anyone else to do it, right? It's, it's, this is publicly visible because Kevin's, Kevin's accessing this, and I didn't, certainly didn't give him any credentials to access this. Cool. So anyone can see it, and it can offend anyone. <laughs> and this does go back to 20 like the very beginning as well so it, it um, goes back a very long time beginning is a little little too but, strong but yeah it goes back yeah, like four or five 2017 ish years. so there's a lot of stuff in here too that also may have been taken care of already or fixed i know sure. that there was some blue ocean stuff that you know was not helpful back then but now might not be relevant or resolved Egg either way Exactly. And and this is not a page we worry about updating, right? It's just mm -hmm. it's just a, a a log of people's comments. And if sometimes mm -hmm. the comments are helpful, we use those comments. And if they're not, right. we we just keep going. For instance, the page you're on right now has a complaint about the Git plugin. And mm -hmm. that was what motivated me to do a much better job documenting that plugin. So there are times when this inspires us. Mm -hmm. There are other times that it just infuriates us or angers us or makes me mad or that kind of thing. And sometimes people are nice and just say it was very helpful. Well, and and, and <laughs> we don't object to that either. It's just no. most of the time what we really want is their, their negative feedback, not their positive feedback. Yes, mm -hmm. very helpful is not very helpful, but it's right. encouraging. <laughs> it, yeah. it is, yes. But, yeah. Okay, so are you comfortable with this page, Kevin, in terms of yep. what you do there? Yep. All right, so the next the next one down then is create documentation. That mm -hmm. one, you've already been doing it with your additions to the Blue Ocean page, with your mm -hmm. additions of screen of videos that are relevant to particular topics. You add those relevant videos in. And mm -hmm. I think the users, we've got good evidence based on click counts on those videos that the users appreciate that. So, oh, so keep doing that. Okay, great. Good to hear. Now, the next one is improve the site structure. And this one's one where you and I will have to coordinate it. In mm -hmm. the most recent governance meeting, if you'll open Jenkins.io as a site, we'll talk about what the problem is first. So here on this page in the top 
sort of right hand side, there's the sub projects dot drop down menu. Okay, leave that up for just a minute. Notice there mm -hmm. are some things on that list. Let's see, for instance, have you ever heard of the Jenkins operator? Maybe not, not too much. Personally, no. Uh, do we really need a top level entry for Jenkins remoting? Probably not. The document Jenkins on Kubernetes project was over about two years ago, so it should probably be removed. So, so this needs some cleanup. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so that's one place that needs a little bit of pruning. Now go to the community drop down that's right next to it. Notice here that there's another list of six or eight things. Advocacy and outreach, documentation, Google Summer of Code. Um, mm -hmm. Some of these are inactive. <clears throat> Others right. are, are still very active. But what the governance proposal was is, hey, let's, let's switch from this concept of two different things, sub-projects and special interest groups, to mm -hmm. one thing, working groups. And we'll put all the working groups under the sub-projects menu and call it working groups oh, okay. and remove them from communities so that it's just working groups and there we'll have the platform SIG, the advocacy SIG, we'll have Google Summer of Code, we'll have any other short-term things we create can go there so that community becomes a shorter menu item and, and mm -hmm. what would become working groups is about the same size actually but a little more fluid right and it's basically it's making sure the community chat is focused on the community aspect of jenkins and then right having the sub projects special interest groups i mean it, it from a new person perspective it doesn't seem like there's too too much difference between the two so make condensing that all makes sense exactly and that was gavin mogan's point in governance board was Really, the and, and Oleg Nanashev agreed. Subprojects and special interest groups are many times indistinguishable from each other. We can't tell what why why is something a special interest group and not a subproject? Why is something a subproject and not a SIG? Yeah. So right. so that's a task for us. But that's a that's a structural thing that you and I will have to coordinate. And because it changed as the top level menu. We'll need to be sure we we bring Gavin into it because he has a web component now right. that does the top level menu bar and he'll want to update that. Right. That everything will have to be aligned at that point with the web components being separate from the page. So exactly. Okay. okay so back to the document. Yeah. Okay, so then now this is one where Alex, Alex is deeply involved here and has been a, a lead on multiple Jenkins releases. So review, revise, approve, and merge the weekly change logs and the LTS change logs. We've got the LTS 2.375.1 with Alex as the release lead, and he'll need a change log and an upgrade guide. So you and I will work on that next week uh, to, to get that prepped and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Alex, I assume if it's ready by end of next week, that's soon enough for you, or do you need it sooner than that? That sounds good. The release candidate went out yesterday mm -hmm. and the final release is scheduled as usual 14 days after that. And I think if we will have that by next Friday or Thursday or end of next week, we are definitely in good shape to release point one in the week after that. Great. Thank you. Okay. So then let's see the, oh, so Jenkins releases. I think actually there, Kevin, you're pretty comfortable with that. Any questions you wanted to ask there? Um, honestly, no. Uh, we I've been working on the LTS and change logs for a little bit now, um, with under your guidance, of course, and um, working with the release leads on the past few and the rest of the developers. Um, I feel pretty confident about that and comfortable. Um, and I know I can reach out to Alex if I have questions on this one or if I want to double check anything on this case. Um, or whoever the release lead is in the next one. So, um, yeah, no, I feel pretty confident and comfortable with the Jenkins release stuff. So, all right, good. So then, let's go to the next one, the Wiki to GitHub migration project. And and let's let's be more clear: plugin mm -hmm. documentation migration project. Right. So this is specific to plugins, mm -hmm. not to other forms of documentation. Uh, if you'll click that hyperlink, track the migration project, mm -hmm. 
And then, so what this is, it, at the top of this, we see 892 plugins still need to have their documentation migrated, but 946 are done. Now, the nice thing here is we've got a tracking project that we're using. This is sort of sort of a, a, a different experiment. So I'm going to link to the tracking project. So if Kevin, you can get to it as well from here. If you scroll down past something that says, okay, look for something that says PR merged. Oh, right here. Click that. Okay. Okay, here's the pull request. This pull request is in merged, but not yet released. But if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, plugin documentation migration wiki, click that. That is a GitHub project hmm. that tracks these pull requests. So it's a different technique, but it, it's been a, well, for me, it was an experiment to see, could I use GitHub projects to get something useful out of it? And it's sort of been useful. Right. But what what happens here is when a new when a new pull request is created to propose to migrate documentation, I will typically click the plus sign above the in progress column. So click yep. that and paste the URL to that pull request and then click add. You don't need to do it now, but what that would then do is now that creates this entry that mm -hmm. it's connected. And so now we'll get status reports. Okay, uh, I thought it was entirely automatic and I was scratching my head. How did he do that? So no, it's partly manual. Oh, right. thank it's, you. <laughs> it's not just partly manually, it's entirely manual. <laughs> I prefer that. It's, it's embarrassingly manual. And, and, and that's, I'm sure there's a way to make it not manual, but it just wasn't worth the effort. So for me, it was, yes, let's put that. So, and in terms of, if you'll go back to that, uh, that report, uh, I think, let's see, which one was it? That one. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you look at this from the, the high level, we're making really pretty good progress because as you, if you start from the top and scroll downward, you see that the 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 high volume plugins plugins with more than a hundred thousand installations are generally all done. Just keep going down, keep going down, and whoops. Let's see. Well, back up. Okay, so here we go. No, even so, deprecated. We don't have to worry about that. So so before we get to the first one, we're already down to the thirty thousand. So less than ten percent of all controller installs before we get one that that hasn't been okay and merged and released. So so that's that's encouraging. Now there's there's still a lot to be done. The the when a PR is open and not merged, that usually means the plugin is abandoned or up for adoption. And and that's what you see here, right? The Ansible plugins pull request was opened, I think two plus years ago, but it's there's not been a release. Yeah. Just over two years ago now. Yep. So. so. Okay. And All right. um, is there, uh, I know this would be the separate page, but uh, does this coincide with any of the Jenkins uh, reviewing issues and stuff like that? Or this, these would be separate because they're plugins. So I wouldn't, we wouldn't actually receive pull requests for these directly you won't be notified of a need yeah. to review these although you certainly could if you wanted to you could review the pull requests and comment on them so when a pr if you if you scroll up to the top you can mm -hmm. sort based on that status column and so then mm -hmm. it will group all of the search for pr uh, open So here they are. You could go review these pull requests to give your comments on, on these proposed um, mm -hmm. pull requests. Do, as far as I can tell, it hasn't inspired or prompted or helped anyone when I've done that. So I've not bothered. I've if if the a documentation pull request to a plugin doesn't get merged pretty quickly, 
it doesn't leave me very hopeful that it's going to be merged anytime soon. Right. And so, uh, so these all, all the pull requests that are, for instance, so open or merged, they would have to be addressed by the plugin maintainer, though. Right? Correct. That's, or, that's all or someone else would have to adopt the plugin in order to in order to merge it and then release the new version of the plugin with it. Okay, got it. So, yeah. So uh, in my head, I was thinking this might coincide with reviewing the Jenkins issues or. Um, uh, what was the other one? The pull requests, but it, these are going to be separate from what I would be it, seeing on those. So yeah, for me, it's it's actually quite different. It's quite okay. different because you have so little control over this one. Yeah. Okay. All you can Great. do really here is report status. Okay. Got it. Okay. Great. So then, on the next topic, advocacy projects. Uh, there, it's trying to watch for and encourage people to do good contributions documentation wise for Google Summer of Code, She Code Africa Contribute On. Those two are top, top of our list because we've done them multiple times. Google Season of Docs, we did once, and it, the management overhead for Google Season of Docs was large enough that I'm not sure I'd lobby we do it again. It, it just it had it had more there was more work hiding in it than I was ready to to do. Uh, okay. Um, and then would Hacktoberfest be another advocacy project? Oh, oh, Hacktoberfest. Oh, yes, absolutely. And that's okay. that's certainly a very popular one. Yes. Just making sure. Thanks. So I know um, the Google Summer of Code twenty twenty three proposals are. Or they're, they're, those are being looked for right now. I think we just actually had a blog post yesterday about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I, and I do want to actually participate in that and can, and be a mentor as much as I can. So, uh, I'll be sure to reach out to Jean Marc and Alyssa about that, or Jean Marc, I guess. Um, so, yeah, no, and, and I've been doing. I I have participated and helped with Hacktoberfest just the last month, um, and She Code Africa as well. So. Uh, it's another thing I'm uh, fairly comfortable in at this point. Great. Those are those are the the collected topics that I recognize. I'm sure we'll find more, and as we find more, we'll we can add them to the list. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'm sure that as I go along, I'll have questions that you might not have thought of either. So we'll figure it out together. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, and like I had mentioned earlier, just to make sure that it's on record, that if anyone needs help with anything, please just reach out to me. Let me know if there's some place I can uh, change or affect in any way. Uh, I'm more than happy to help and to collaborate. So um, any, any ask, no worries. I will say whether or not I can handle it and then figure out the best way to go about doing it. So. Um, and then I think this is something, the, the benefits there, I think, are things I've already been noticing. Like we have more clicks on the videos in the documentation, like you stated earlier. And um, just, I want, I want to continue to uh, encourage people and empower the community as much as possible to participate however they can. So um, yeah, I mean, my goals are aligned with the benefits of it, so. Great, that's yeah. all that I had. Great. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I'm on the same page with you, Mark. I'm, I'm really excited and really happy to be getting going on this. Uh, Bruno, Alex, did you have any other questions or concerns that you wanted to share or, or anything? Uh, concerns? Hmm. Uh, maybe you're going to be very, very bu busy, uh, I guess. <laughs> oh. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Uh, uh, go ahead, Bruno. Uh, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I just read over the list again. You have mm -hmm. a bullet point uh, called periodically check for misplaced docs issues on Jira a bit above. Yep. Uh, is the website project no longer intended to be used on Jira? Because if that is the case, we could just archive it so that new people don't create issues there. Yeah, I just an idea. Interesting suggestion. The the experience I've had has been that people don't submit well and we saw it in kevin's query the last submission to that project was april of 2022 so i think it's already well enough hidden i'm not sure that we want to go through the the 
the risk of archiving it with the risk that that may hide things that we'd like to keep publicly visible. So Mark, do you know if there are still links somewhere that can lead to the J Jira uh, issue tracker? Uh, how people uh, end up at that place? I don't know of any links okay. that lead to the to the Jira to the website to submitting to the website uh, Jira project. And, and if there are any, we should definitely remove them. There certainly are still links in various locations that link to existing website issues, you know, for documentation purposes, that kind of thing. Yeah, that is a similar process is what we are doing when moving when you're moving from guitar uh, from Jira issues to GitHub. We basically just archive the component that makes sure that the submitter can no longer select on the drop down, but all issues and all components are still available for search or in the search query. That's making sure that just makes sure that you are actually no longer able to submit new issues, but still have the track to browse resist uh, existing issues. Yeah, and my my hunch is that because this is website as a project at the Jira level and not a not a component, it's I it's more difficult, I would assume. But I, I haven't done the research to to find a way to switch off accepting any new issues in the in the website project. It's an interesting topic. Kevin, you could put it on the list to see, hey, should we make the Jira website project read only somehow so good insight alex anything else alex no that's from my side so far but something that is definitely possible and feasible for the future mm -hmm. right yeah and if it makes sense to archive things and, and make sure that that's uh un, unreachable for users unless they get there through a separate link per like i'm more than um happy to sit down and figure that out and, and take a look at all this sort of stuff for sure and then i know i think there, there's also been some discussion about um site generator and uh i've we've been looking at stuff like antora um just due to the versioning option that they have for the documentation so that's another thing that um I've been talking with Basel about it a little bit in the last few weeks and going forward, it's something that we want to kind of investigate further. So uh, that might also fall under one of these. So uh, yeah, it definitely falls under some of this stuff. So cool. All right. Um, so that covers the documentation officer and I am super excited to be that busy. Thank you again. Um, last items on the agenda. So we'll have weekly 2.379 next week. Uh, I'll be reviewing that automated change log in the next 24, 48 hours so that I can be taken care of and updated uh, either prior to merge or after merging. Uh, we have our next LTS coming out on November 30th. It is 2.375.1. Um, the baseline was is 2.375. Alex is actually the release lead. So again, Alex, thank you very much for becoming being the release lead here. Uh, and uh, as far as documentation goes, Mark and I are going to be working on the change log and upgrade guide to make sure that that's taken care of, completed, and ready to review uh, prior to the end of next week. Most likely a little bit earlier than that due to Thanksgiving here in the US. Um, one last thing about the LTS is that the RC testing has started just the other day. So uh, we are in full swing of it. Uh, and like I had mentioned, next Thursday uh, is Thanksgiving here in the US. So uh, Doc's office hours will be uh, canceled next week. Uh, we will resume the week afterwards. So just a short break, but um, yeah, the holiday in the US is gonna uh, hold things off for us. Uh, and in that vein, uh, we also want to have a blog post published uh, around Thanksgiving that shows appreciation and thanks to all of our sponsors, um, the continued support and, uh, you know, resources that, that we've gotten. We want to make sure that um, no stones left unturned and that everyone, uh, we're not leaving anyone out. We're showing our appreciation. You know, the open source community is built on this idea. So uh, making sure that everyone feels uh, appreciated and, and feels like they're uh, you know, continuing to perform meaningful actions is really, really important and something that uh, I want to focus on 
a lot as a documentation officer. So, yeah. Um, so look for that. That'll be coming out. We'll be celebrating the, the sponsors and uh, yeah, going to the holiday season on a nice note. Uh, is there anything else that I have forgotten or anything else that would like to be added? Thoughts? If not, I think we can go ahead and stop the recording. Uh, it'll be available in 24 to 48 hours.